Right now in the field, joining me live, Gene Casares, legal correspondent in session. Gene, what happened? Nancy, they had just gotten married. And then after that, it was time for the celebration. They went out to dinner. They got a limo. They went to a nightclub. And then everybody disbanded about 4 o'clock in the morning. That's the last time anybody ever saw Estrella. She was found in her wedding dress in the bathtub. And her husband, he took off in his $115,000 Maserati. You know, uh, so many women dream of the moment. They walk down the aisle. It's the beginning of happily ever after. And in those vows, you typically say, till death do us part. Little did this bride know, till death do us part, meant only about 12 hours. We're taking your calls. Unleash the lawyers. Joining me tonight out of Chicago, Kelly Sandon, former prosecutor, Renee Rockwell, defense attorney, Atlanta, Mickey Sherman, defense attorney and author of How Can You Defend Those People? All right, Renee. The groom is on the run. To, uh, to my that, inter Nancy? That's my interpretation. He hasn't been seen. He can't be found. Last seen in a Maserati. Well, why isn't he with the family? Why isn't he grieving? Why hasn't he met with cops? Why can't he be a victim also, Nancy? Just because he's not around doesn't mean he hasn't fallen to some kind of disaster also. He's in well, a big, nice car. He could have gotten kidnapped and, and taken away. Just you know, I'd, I'd like you to put Miss Rockwell up when she spins her tails on national TV. There is absolutely no evidence, not a scintilla of evidence, to suggest that he is a victim. Hold on. Gene Casares is out in the field. Gene, hasn't he been spotted in the Maserati? You know, there have been a lot of sightings of a Maserati in and around Illinois because that is the state that all of this happened in. No sightings of him, however, but speculation is he could have abandoned the car at this point. We are waiting and standing by to find out if police have made a positive ID and if they are going to be able to find the boyfriend, to find the new groom. Back to you, Rockwell. Well, Nancy, aren't we being precipitous if we're making a, him a suspect already? Just because he's the closest one to her doesn't mean he's guilty. So I, okay. I, I say we wait um, to find out where he is. repeat to the New York control room, please put up the lawyers. Thank you. All right, Renee, just answer as simply as possible in light of the fact that you are a lawyer and do have a JD. All right, Renee, who was the last person seen with her alive? If it's him, it does not mean Nancy, me. that, that he killed her. That would be. Her. Could you just answer? It was the groom. What was she wearing at the time of her murder, Renee? Her wedding dress does not mean that he's and not. And who was she last seen with while wearing her wedding dress? The groom. And who also has access to her apartment beside her where she was found dead? the groom, but that does not mean that he's not also a victim, and Nancy. Mickey Sherman, who hasn't been found at this hour? Objection. You're harassing the guest lawyer, by the way. I the gotta, groom? I got I to defend, defend Renee. You know, just because he's not around, just because he's got a fancy car and he's got a crappy record, that doesn't necessarily mean he is the killer. He may be part of a victim. In the, in the, he may be a victim in another plot, we, for all we know. I remember back when Jennifer okay, Wilbanks, the runaway bride, took off. Let me just put your feet to the fire. No, I never thought her husband did it. Oh. I never thought her husband did it because he had an alibi and because he was doing everything right, looking for her, cooperating with police, going on searches himself. But we were but castigating in... him for not taking the lie detector test on, on uh, but it was televised. It's not always we, as it seems. Can we get back to this case? <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, Mickey, what is the um, fabricated scenario in which the groom is somehow a crime victim? Well, we don't know. That's the, and that's what Renee was the point she was making. We that's just what don't Renee know. was making we, up. All we know is the woman is dead and the guy is not around. That may mean that he killed her, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. All right, out to you, Kelly Sandin, former prosecutor. What do you know? As a prosecutor, I know this looks really bad for him. The fact that he's on the run, the fact that neighbors didn't hear a sign of a struggle, you're exactly right. He's the last one to see her alive. They have a turbulent past. He's hit her in the past. He's on the run, Nancy. So I'm not buying these fabricated th theories that he's a victim. I think that he is the number one suspect for a reason. They're going after him. We heard about sightings. Why isn't he around? Why is he saying, help, 
bring my wife's killer to justice. It's not happening because he's somehow involved, and I don't see him as a victim here. Okay, Renee, I want you to think back a couple of years. Do you remember when, uh, think hard, rack your brain, Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman were found dead in the front yard with their heads nearly chopped off? Who went on the run in a low-speed chase in a white Bronco? And who got acquitted? <laughs> and who was guilty anyway? O.J. Simpson. Oh, well, we don't have to talk about that. That case is over. But, Nancy, obviously... <laughs> That's he's the, <laughs> Yeah, and then there was another little mishap in Vegas. But at any rate, Nancy, it's still too early. I wasn't in the room. I don't know what happened. Sure, he's a likely suspect, but can we not execute him until we find out?